What up, everyone? It's Ethan. Uh, today, we continue on with Asian guys from Toronto with my friend Derek Chan. I met him during my trip to NYC, where he joined me on my brief visit to Drake's and the Armory. Now, like all just before him, Derek is a university student who loves classic menswear. I, I consider him to be raised by the internet in the sense that he not only frequented MFA, male fashion vice, uh, but he also uh, looks at permanent style and dye workwear for inspiration and knowledge. Uh, in the second half of the episode, we discuss how to create your own personal style within classic menswear. Because even though it is fashion, it's still pretty largely traditional when you compare it to other stuff like streetwear or even the vintage community. Uh, we discuss all that and more on today's episode of Style and Direction. Hi guys, welcome to Style and Direction, a menswear podcast without the stuffiness. This is your host, Ethan Wong. And I'm your other host, Spencer Adi. It sounds like you were going to say something again, like right at the end of that. Yeah, I, I, I just scratched what was your lead my in? microphone. Um, what was my lead-in? Yeah, like, I mean, like, you, it sounds like you were leading towards something. You're like, no, Spencer, I wasn't. Adi. I, I think in like the last, because, okay, so this is weird. So a little bit, a little peek behind the curtain. The last like three weeks, Ethan and I have been recording these episodes in the same room. Right. Yeah, that's and true. F- and this is the first time we're not. And right yeah. now, I'm just getting like a, a crushing sense of loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get that all the time. This is why I'm on Tinder. Um, yeah. So today, we are going to be discussing the concept of you know creating a style within classic menswear. I know we had Josh on two episodes ago where we talked about going beyond it and how, you know, incorporating like, you know, different silhouettes and, you know, incorporating workwear, you know, Japanese American, all that kind of stuff to create like a totally new style. But this time we're going back to the sartorial roots, I guess you would say. But before we do that, are we going to do our traditional games? Like, what did you do today and what are you wearing? uh, You know, I thought, yeah, I guess we can do that, you know, for the sake of time. We set a precedent, Okay. We saw, we got a president. Yeah, we have yeah, a president. Yeah, not my just, hashtag, not my president. I'm just trying to maintain consistency and also uh, keep that guest all quiet in this corner. Gross. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, so well, why don't you tell us what you did today? Uh, I went to, I went to like a guided meditation thing. Oh, because that's I'm, weird. I'm I'm writing about it for the school newspaper. Yeah, for and those I'm, of you who don't know, Spencer is a journalism major. Uh, and I'm, uh, turns out I'm not good at meditation. <laughs> You're telling me you can't sit still and do nothing for like, I, tr- I don't know, I, half an hour. It was half an hour. I, yeah. The entire mm. time I was like, just got to think of nothing. And I never could. I can't do that either. So I don't blame yeah. you for that. Give it a try though. It was, uh, it was kind of fun. <laughs> well, not fun, but you said, you know. okay, I hated it, but it was fun. I never, so. okay. Hey, I never said I hated it. I just said I this was some very gotcha bad journalism. at it. Uh huh. I guess so. Uh, well, I, I just had work today. I don't really have anything special to add, you know, That's because boring. the last, yeah, I guess the last few times we've recorded podcast, I think we've done something interesting. It was usually on a weekend, but this time no, it's a... It, the last couple of times you did something interesting. Oh, that's and right. And he worked. So... And now the table flipped, how the turntables. Yeah. And so, yeah, I didn't you... really do anything today. Um, at the time of recording, we are what, like mid deep and mar- mar- marchy doggy. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... You know, it's Pi Day at the time of recording this, and that will definitely mm-hmm. date the uh, date the podcast. But I can't wait till we're finished so I can get some pizza pie, as uh, the uh, t- Italians I've heard call it. I've ha- I had some uh, Dickie's barbecue for dinner. It was pretty good. P- penis barbecue. Oh yeah, nice, dude. So anyway, tell us about your outfit that you wore today. Uh, well, today I wore a green tweed jacket. With a blue OCBD and a blue club tie. And, gr- of course, pleated gray trousers, which is, like, my go-to. Um, it was interesting because, you know, normally I don't really do, like, tone-on-tone. Tone. Like, I you know, blue shirt, blue tie. And the the blue shirt was plain. Hmm. And, I you know, as people who have listened to the podcast or read the blog, I typically don't like wearing plain shirts. I really prefer striped shirts and... Maybe a checked shirt, but it's almost always a striped shirt. And so going plain was a bit different for me. 
especially you know with like a, a, a kind of a more solid tie because the club tie it's not like a striped tie we get like three colors it's just like a blue tie with like a little bit of print on it so is is going plain the your scientology documentary yeah yeah plain crazy <laughs> nice that's a, that's a disney film that's yeah one of the first mickeys right as yeah I like to call them <laughs> the first mickey yeah the first mickey uh well earlier today i was wearing my teenage denim quick shout out quick, to those yeah there's our first plug yeah first plug. maybe the way that it'll be different than comedy bang bang is that we will do plugs throughout the whole thing as opposed to at the end but they i mean they kind of do like plugs in the middle like with their like blue apron or that's true.com stuff that's so true. we are ex- exactly the same as comedy bang Bang. when are we gonna have like a comedian come on and improvise a character <laughs> well well we kind of have that at some point you guys will uh sneak preview for and the uh the next episode, yeah, right after this one. So you'll yeah, uh, that you'll we see already in, recorded. You'll see two weeks from now. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, I was wearing that with just like a fifty sport shirt. Not that exciting outfit. Then I came home and I changed into. Hey, we'll get into this later in the episode. I changed into my reporter style because I was covering oh. an event. And the outfit I came up with, I I I was digging through my closet, and I forgot that I had like it's this like green like olive bdu jacket shirt whatever shirt jacket i guess a shirt jack yeah that (laughs) that's a great way to put it thanks that i had gotten years and years ago and i wore like twice uh and i threw that on because i really want a jungle jacket and i don't have one and this is the closest thing i have to that yeah i don't have one either so i i also have like a bdu i think i think for people to understand so bdu is kind of like yeah it's like a shirt jacket usually it's got like four pockets i think Mm -hmm. um and then the jungle jacket is very similar except it's got slanted breast pockets Mm -hmm. and that's really cool and i think that detail alone is what makes those like a hundred over a hundred (laughs) dollars yep um so go figure with menswear you know yeah i need to we need to start hitting up some like surplus stores like find out what good surplus stores there are yeah i like that s that yep. surplus but then i have uh blue uh brooks brothers oxford my my cords and loafers with the taupe socks hdmi cords yeah oh. I'm, I'm plugged into the tv this is an episode of black mirror <laughs> oh my god i've uh-huh. only seen the pig fucking episode and after that moment i was like i'm not sure if i want to keep watching this show and so what I if never i told did. you that the all the rest of like three or four seasons that follow it it's like all about the pig fucking thing yeah it's like oh just a continuation of that uh that then would be thank god thing. i didn't continue right mm-hmm. <laughs> but i think it's time to find out what our guest is wearing and uh, we'll introduce him formally in a moment but mr guest why don't you tell us what you're wearing right now Hello, my name is Hello. Mr. Guest. <laughs> oh, Christopher Mr. Guest? Guest? Yeah. yeah. It's the guy from, from Guess. Who? So, okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Just tell us what you're wearing. <laughs> uh, I am totally in my pajamas. So I'm wearing a... I thought you were about to say, I am totally <laughs> naked right now. <laughs> I am totally in the nude. I am wearing my finest suit made of birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, nice. That's a good one. I've been, uh, I've grown it myself. What were you wearing earlier today? Um, earlier today, I was in a blue pencil striped shirt with... Did you draw it on yourself? Yeah, okay. definitely. You had to use a oh, ruler. Great. Gotta make sure those lines are straight. Nice. Um, blue pencil striped shirt. I had high-rise Japanese denim on. Hmm. And... Oh, from where? Oh, uh, so... Uh, I actually picked up this pair in Okayama, Japan, like personally. So oh, we can so get it's into that. Japanese when we're, uh, denim. It is Japanese denim. Straight up. And nice. As for shoes, I think I was wearing a pair of uh, gray bass bucks. Like, but the, like dollars? Yeah. Just kidding. Okay. American. I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice. Oh, cool. That Import sounds like a pretty plates. dope like outfit. Like kind of what Spencer would kind of wear a little bit. Yeah. You know, my my university days are over, Jack. And uh, okay, but like, yeah, I haven't really dressed like in like a Ivy kind of, you know, casual outfit in a while. I mean, I wear stuff to work, and then if I'm not at work, I tend to like kind of dress very differently. 
than mm-hmm. what I would wear to work. You know, sometimes it's like workwear or 90s. So I kind of miss like going out casually, but because I dress up like almost every day, which I think we kind of got into on the uniform episode, um, it's you know it's kind of it's kind of cool to be different, but it's it's nice to hear you know you young kids dressing up for okay. for school. Oh, thanks, Gramps. Great. Oh yes, I love the young uns. Uh, that's my that's my old man character, by the way. <laughs> that's a great character. Thanks, thanks. Welcome back to Ethan Does Voices. Have you um, considered acting? I've honestly I've considered voice acting, and uh, that dream that dream died in high school. <laughs> But for th- I don't know if many people know this, but I actually uh, was in a play when I was like six years old or se- like eight years old or something. And then I had the opportunity to audition for stuff. But then I decided not to because I wanted to go to school because I heard that kid actors don't go to school and they end up, you know, being bad. And then, you know, you saw how Zach and Cody turned out and they were pretty cool. So Joke's you could have been me. hanging out with Zach and Cody. I, you know, I have a picture with Dylan and Cole Sprouse, so technically that really? didn't happen. Yeah, Fun I was fact. in Little Tokyo. Yeah, could you get yeah. him on the podcast? Uh, sure. <laughs> oh. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Next guest, Dylan and Cole Sprouse. Exclusive. Uh-huh. Don't wait, don't they go to NYU? Yeah. Don't so and you go to NYU, don't yeah, you, Derek? I do. Oh well, there it is. Mr. It's Derek. <laughs> it's oh, Derek Chan. Give it up for Derek Chan joining us three hours in the future in. Well, he's in Toronto, just like our friend Aldous. <laughs> is it still three hours in the future? It is. The future is not so sunny right now. It's uh, it's pretty dark. I mean, it is here, too. The future so. is female. Yep. No. Nice. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so uh, I, uh, to give Derek a formal introduction now after we know what he's wearing, uh, Derek is a friend of mine from that I met while I was in New York, but he's originally from Toronto. Is that correct? That is indeed. That is indeed dot com. Another another plug. <laughs> I miss the GoDaddy uh, commercials. I don't think I've ever used GoDaddy before. I don't. I, no. I definitely haven't. Well, either, Ethan, how many websites have you had? Ethan, how many websites have you had to host? Uh, I've had <laughs> a lot. Okay. <laughs> My. What I, are you implying? I, I actually I didn't know where I was going with that joke, <laughs> but. Um, no, I've never. Is that what? Okay, is that what GoDaddy is? Is that a hosting website? I'm pretty sure it's a website hosting service. I believe oh. it's a web domain service. Uh, I'm a I'm a Squarespace family, so. Well, that's a web design thing. Okay, I don't separate. know anything about making websites. Okay, my, I've made a website. My, it's not complete, so don't go to it. My okay, Street Expressa is a WordPress. It's a free WordPress site that I used a free theme for. It's called Eighties, I think, <laughs> or eighty AD, I think. I don't know. It's fucking all free, man. I, I write for my, you know, I write for free. I so. hear it's a uh, menswear blog with the stuffiness. It is. You know, I changed it to that because I didn't want to have the original um, header anymore. And I was like, well, the menswear stuff without the, you know, well, the menswear part without the stuffiness was a really good tagline for the podcast. I'm like, I guess it's just going to be the blog thing now. Yeah, brand synergy, right? And then eventually, Amazing, I feel like Street Express is going to eventually turn into StyleDirection.com. <laughs> so yeah, when you get your own domain, that's yeah. where you're going to make it. When I when I have the opportunity to actually uh, monetize it or have enough money to like self-host. I but, mean, hey, just to let you know, for my for my domain, I think I pay like like ten dollars a year or something like that through Google. So look yeah, into that's it. through Google, but I've got to go through WordPress, right? So. Well, okay. Well, there's the you can own the URL, but then you also have to yeah you would pro- probably have to pay WordPress to host it. Exactly, and I I don't really want to spend twenty bucks a month. That's fair, because I already spend more than that every four days. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so Derek is joining us from Toronto, but I met him when I was in New York during my cool New York trip about which you can hear about. In oh yeah, that's, three. Is that really episode three? Yeah. Oh shit. What's the episode before that? Dapper Day? Oh, yeah, I, I guess so. it is. Wow. First episode was Vintage. Second episode was Dapper Day. Third episode was New York. And fourth episode, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't really keep track of those things. Uh, but, mm-hmm. Derek, why don't you tell us a bit how, how you uh, – how did you meet me? Because I, I know that you <laughs> – you, well, I'm okay. Well, I know you messaged me on Instagram, and that's how we met up at Drake's. And then we kind of spent, like, the, we did at the Armory, and then, you know, you had – went off to go back home and i went to go get dinner 
Um, but yeah, how did you uh, first get in touch with uh, with me? So sometime in 2008, I saw you in a diner and then proceeded to stalk you for about three oh, years. Oh my god! Uh, no, no. 2008? That's <laughs> I was twelve. I was twelve years old. <laughs> Oh my god. 2008. How old was I? Oh gosh. I was Yeah, I was 11. Yeah, we're not that far apart in age. And actually <laughs> we're not so are. different you and I. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Okay, I definitely have pictures of 2008. I can definitely share sometime. Anyways. Because it's awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so to be clear, I did not stalk Ethan. <laughs> Go all the way Damn to it. the West Coast. Unfortunately, I don't have that pleasure. Um, I I love pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fan favorite, I hear. <laughs> so I first saw Ethan and, you know, uh, read his blog while I was browsing MFA on Reddit, Male Fashion Advice. So I would say I started reading Male Fashion Advice when I was in my sophomore year of high school. Hmm. So wow. that would be, no, yeah, it was pretty early on. So I think that was probably 2012, 2013-ish. And I was totally just lurking on Reddit. I didn't have an account or anything, but I. How did you find MFA? How did I do you find just like ran? Do you just randomly were like, "Hey, this is a cool fashion I think that community." Was, I think around the eighth grade. So. Like oh. oh wow. Eighth or ninth grade, uh, we had all started getting into, into League of Legends. <laughs> wow, okay. nice. Because of that, we got linked over to the League of Legends subreddit, and from there, um, around. I believe it was, you know, around that time, sophomore year, freshman year of high school, my mom uh, happened to give me two books that she had actually bought from my dad years and years ago. But huh. my dad, being unfashionable, never read any of them. And so they turned out to just be these, like, primer guides on, you know, appropriate workwear, like, in an office. So I totally got my, like, very first taste of menswear, you know, formally speaking, menswear as a subject through those two books. Wow. Are the, what, did, yeah. do, do you still recommend the books? Like, did, do you stand by the advice that I gave? Because I have the book How to Be a Gentleman by John Bridges <clears throat> right in front of me that my mom also actually gave me. It must have been also, like, pretty early on in high school. So that, I, I guess, like, we could, we, we might have shared that experience. Yeah, that's, that's certainly, you know, I don't think it was that book. But uh, those two books... They're pretty dated, I would say. They're, they're, there's a healthy smattering of '90s throughout that. So, uh, so was it like a legit like like style thing? Sort of. It was like one of those oh. really thin like. It was really just like a primer book on like here are striped shirts and here are checkered shirts and here are mm. ties and here are more ties, and here are sport jackets and this is a suit and here's another okay. suit. Okay. And it was like basically just going through and saying, you know. This is how you combine patterns in a rough fashion. So huh. oh, wow. it was and it was a really like good um I would say it's a good introduction into like the very, very basics of that sort of thing. And then through there, you know, while I was on Reddit, I was a little bit more interested in clothing, so I eventually found male fashion advice. And then I just started like really pouring through the uh the sidebar that they have because they have really, really good guides and really good like links that people have written huge huge posts on and i'm a huge mm -hmm. nerd that's right so i basically when i get interested in a subject i like to go like really deep into it so i, I love going use, deep yeah going deep man all the way <laughs> raw dog in it okay balls deep anyway <laughs> so so it sounds like you know you kind of got into menswear through that book and through mfa um so why don't you kind of describe like how did your style evolution go like because the, the, your first foray into fashion was through a book on business wear. So were you like a, you know, a freshman or a sophomore in high school wearing like pinstripe suits so, and stuff like that? You know, I think if I started my whole life just dressing very casually and then finally got into that book and started seeing, hey, wait, this is, you know, this is how I get dressed up because dressing well is equivalent to dressing up, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think, oh, sure. You know, I we think if there. I started with casual clothing my whole life, then I may have gone through that phase. But as it turns out, um, in even from elementary school, um, I've been in private school like almost my entire life, honestly. Well, so uh. because of that, uh, since even, you know, junior, senior kindergarten, grades one to six, I believe. Yeah. So throughout that entire time, I had a uniform in school. Hmm. And these, and like, you know, my elementary school was 
really, really preppy. Like, oh boy. Like we're talking, we're talking like three generations of white waspy preppy. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> did he have like? Did he have like the blazer and reptile? And I, stuff had, like that, I had the it... blazer and the reptile. I had three. Oh, no way. God. I had three generations of the reptile because in first grade they didn't expect you to actually tie your tie. So I started out with the uh, with the zip the tie. On? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yikes. With the zip tie, and then we moved on to the clip on. And then we moved on to the <laughs> elastic clip on in which it doesn't clip onto the, you know, onto the uh collar button, but instead there's a uh, there's an elastic where the uh I guess the neckband of the tied tie would be and so you would, you know, hook that neckband on and then flip the collar down and there's your tie. Oh, kind of mm-hmm. like a kind of like a like a clip-on bow tie kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Or like the, uh, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Jesus. something similar. So, you know, I went through three generations of training tie. <laughs> before I finally had my actual, you know, rep tie that I had to wear, you know. And you were ready. And I was ready. And I had evolved. You put that shit on and you're like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm ready to take on the world. I had evolved mm-hmm. into my final form. <laughs> yeah, so from an early age, you know, I was pretty um, familiar with gray flannels, uh, buttoned up shirts, having a tie on all the time, having a sweater mm-hmm. on, you know, a blazer on assembly days, black shoes. Mm-hmm. So that stuff was like pretty, I guess you could say it was pretty well ingrained from the very start with, you know, wow. wearing a tie. But hmm. eventually I moved on to middle school and high school in which I did not require a uniform. And Did so, you like go all out? Were you like, fuck yeah, I'm going to wear plaid shorts and domo t-shirts. I that's did, a, I did that's wear plaid shorts. Did. Domo t-shirts, unfortunately, I, uh, <laughs> I missed out on that craze. Because you hate, you do not, uh, you do not condone eating cats, right? Is that what Domo does? does Domo there's that do picture. That? I don't think that's in Domo canon, but there's like that thing where it's like Domo chasing after a cat, and it's like if you don't like my picture, Domo will eat this cat. Oh my gosh! Or something like is this, that. Is this what is this what Domo fan fiction is like? Yeah, oh, <laughs> it's love... it's Spencer like a goes hard into that fanfic area. It's, it's a meme from like ten years ago. So wow, that's that's an ancient meme. I don't want yeah. to see that. I don't. Uh huh. Mm. But, but wow. So then, okay. So what yeah, did you dress so like when you in, weren't uh, in uniform? In, so this presented an interesting um, difficulty for me because basically I'd gone you know almost my entire waking life in gray flannels a white shirt, a tie, and now here right. I was with all this freedom to wear whatever I wanted, <laughs> and I had no idea what to wear. So eventually mm. I settled on, you know, jeans from Uniqlo. Uh, my family and I, we went to Japan a lot, so I got a lot of my clothes from Uniqlo early on. Mm. Um, I happened to get jeans at Uniqlo. Um, I was basically just wearing polo shirts. My mom would take me to Tommy Hilfiger outlets. Nice. So ill-fitting polo shirts. Um horizontal stripes that did not look on me as good as i thought <laughs> they weren't slimming they weren't slimming <laughs> fun fact um and then what else did i wear yeah it was mainly that i went through a brief phase of the uh short sleeve button down over the uh yeah short sleeve button down over the t-shirt with the shorts and the skate shoes oh the skate shoes you know, I mean, you know, whenever I talk to people who have like this, this like transitional phase, all I can think about is how st- still how better they were at it than I was because <laughs> I, I think like I think we talked about this too in the in the uniform podcast episode, but I grew up with uniform throughout my you know throughout high school, like you know, and there wasn't really a lot of opportunities for me to even experiment with anything until maybe college, yeah, and I didn't have. Um, I didn't have MFA. I, didn't, I had no guides. I basically was it whatever my parents told me to wear. So like they were like, oh, you should wear these jeans. And then I'm like, okay, sure. So I wore like boot cut jeans, I think, until like <laughs> sophomore year of high school. And then I got like skinny jeans from like Hot Topic because my friend from church would wear skinny jeans and he went to public school. So I was like, oh, I like what Vincent is wearing. I'm going to wear what he's got going <laughs> on because he's, he's, he's the coolest guy I know right now. Yeah, Vincent. Yeah, Vincent is super cool. Um, he's in the uh, extended canon. Um, if you if you look at the blog, like way like in the beginning, you'll see Vincent. Um, but yeah, so 
I didn't even hear about, I didn't even know what Uniqlo was. I mean, I guess because uh, Uniqlo at the time was only in San Francisco. So I, I never had the opportunity to do that. So all my stuff was H&M maybe or Hot Topic. And, um, and then when I got to college, it was like plaid shorts and um Hanes v-neck undershirts but in colors <laughs> so it just it just wasn't it wasn't good so I'm always envious of these people who like who you know grew up with MFA or you know or had like fashion beans or whatever because I did not have any of that do you want to my first my first like okay so when I first uh started when I when I got first interested in like maybe dressing better uh-huh I didn't want to because my friend Jay had recently started putting effort into his outfits, and I, w- oh, I was Jay. worried people would would start thinking that I was copying him. <laughs> but then my first couple outfits that I would put together would be like you know vintage looks, quote unquote. So like plaid shirts from Target and nice. like khakis or whatever. Um, but then my other looks, which would be my modern looks, would be funny graphic T-shirts. With like, with like button ups open. <laughs> okay, I definitely did that too, though. Yeah, but I'm afraid that this was, you know, maybe senior year or leaning co- closer to college. I mean, okay, honestly, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think I say I say this like every year, but like, ba- I I think I think I'm starting to hit my groove now. Like every my outfits throughout high school were all pretty not great for the most part um right. a lot of the stuff i was wearing up until you know last year year and a half not a huge fan of <laughs> <laughs> i i wish i was able to go back to when i first started college and then like redo how i dressed because i feel like i would be cooler i wish and then also i would have invested my money a lot better <laughs> oh yeah yeah but derek how did it so going into college from you know taking what you've learned from like MFA. What was that like? Because you're a senior now, right? Or a junior? I'm a junior right now. Okay. So how it started was basically, you know, I started wising up to this whole fashion thing in around uh, around (laughs) senior year of high school, I'd say. And that was the time that I started, you know, learning a lot more. And I heard about sport coats. And I was really, (laughs) really down to get a sport coat because I loved wearing a suit. But even then, like, I realized, I mean, this is was me personally, but I feel great in a suit, but I'm going to get What looks, a nerd. But I'm going to get looks if I'm wearing a suit going to class in high school. That's uh, that's not going to fly super well, I thought. Yep. So, yeah, you know, I don't blame you. I learned about this awesome thing called a sport jacket, and then I read a little bit more about it, and I found out, whoa, sport jackets can be in, like, 15 different fabrics and 36 <laughs> different colors and 89 and that's different uh, <laughs> There's... patterns. And you're only that's limited it. to those 89, no more, no less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you learn about that? Is that also from MFA, or did you... Just through MFA. Um, wow. I think there were other sites, like... Uh, yeah, I discovered Put This On relatively early on, too. Hmm. I found Put This On, like, last year, so... Yeah, <laughs> seriously, like... And I workwear, which we'll, we'll get into later on. Oh, in one man, one if only I had known what I know now. Exactly. God, I can't, you know, oh, I, again, I can't reiterate how this, lucky they, you guys are for to find this stuff. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, the, wow, that's, that's super yeah. cool. So, like, what so was I a found, typical outfit maybe your freshman year you know, or something? Freshman year of college coming in. So, I happened to pick up this really, really awesome uh, Uniqlo sport jacket that I still have right now actually it's hmm. a uh, it's a gray houndstooth and uh it's honestly nothing special but the only thing that I thought was like really really good about it was that a it happened to fit me exactly because I am a tiny Asian boy <laughs> and I am skinny and I am a 36 what's that like I'm like a 36 short it's it's pretty rough hmm. finding things of my size honestly which right. is why vintage hasn't worked out super well for me but uh we can talk about that in a bit I think yeah. Um, so I happened to get this jacket, and it was exactly what I was looking for in a first sport jacket. And the retail price on Uniqlo was $100. And oh, I, was like, I think I remember that jacket. And I was like, I don't have $100 on me. But then I looked down <laughs> on the price tag, and there was a, that special red tag that we all look for. Oh, oh my yeah. God. And the number there said... Free 99? 1999. Free 99? Oh, 199. Oh, my God, it was $1,999? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was blowing Jesus. loads. I was like... You know, writing checks, throwing money no, all over the floor. Your no, body, no, your body can't cash. <laughs> no, this this jacket was retailing for a hundred, and I got it for twenty dollars. 
That's hmm. awesome, man. That's, and that's dope. So I was ecstatic. Um, and so I wore that sport jacket going into college. Um, you know, I had a, I had a healthy collection of button down shirts. Cause by this point I had realized, uh, through my high school time that, um, with my background in my elementary school and everything, and I also happen to have a longer neck. So I just look better in colored shirts than I do in t-shirts. Yeah. So by this point I had amassed like a somewhat decent, uh, sw- shirt collection. So it would usually just be a shirt, you know, a pair of jeans or chinos if I felt a little bit more dressed up. Um, Still in the skate shoes because I hadn't really started learning too much about investing in good shoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally I would wear the blazer. And then partway through, I managed to find a good deal on a pair of burgundy cap toe Oxfords that initially through freshman year I thought was too um, dressy to actually pull off. But... In my later years in college, I, you know... In my later years of life. In my later years, I may have just, like, found the courage to actually wear them out, or I just settled into a style and just thought, you know what, like, I don't really care so much about what people are thinking now. Right. So, yeah. Dang. I mean, because, I mean, when I saw you, what were you wearing? You were wearing, like, a Spear and McKay. Quick shout-out to them, because uh, I think we've been talking about them, like, in two yeah. episodes. Man, I think. I'm, I'm in currently, love with them. Uh, I ordered two more pairs of chinos from them, and they they shipped today. Congratulations! Whoa. Yeah, free plugs. I was uh, hoping they would ship like on Monday, and I would get them by the end of the week, but that didn't happen. Oh, the wait oh, is no. the worst part. Yeah, I I honestly live for the wait though. Like I was telling Ethan this the other day, but it's like I get way too excited when I order things online because I love the anticipation. <laughs> that's how that's you get off on it. I do. God, um, but yeah. So you were wearing like a Spear and McKay jacket with like I think, uh, I'm sure I have the picture somewhere. But you were also wearing like David Hart X Gap pants, right? Yep. So most of the classic menswear stuff that I found, and I do say found because uh-huh. I buy almost everything on sale. I happened to get in my freshman year of high school, or sorry, in my freshman year of uh, of college. Wow. So I moved over to New York, and you know Toronto itself is already like. For a Canadian city, it's pretty fashionable, but mm. New York is, New York is something else. I I mean yeah, New York it was is, it was awesome. The New York is there. like the mecca of shopping and fashion, like throughout all of North America, I'd say. And while I may not, you know, have as much luck thrifting as you know Ethan and Spencer do, and among some of my other friends as well, um, what I happen to, I would say, I'd say what I happen to specialize in are sample sales and just swapping sales in general see that's the one thing i think i told you this when you were walking together through like the sample area was that la doesn't have that at least not for any of the brands that we like you know at least because when i was there i think like j crew was having one at that Mm -hmm. moment and then right after that it was uh i think yeah not edos but it was something else like nolly or something yeah the one that i mentioned was um oh gosh what was it called um some bespoke place that actually happened to have some of their returned garments and a few ties, I believe, on sale mm. as well. Holy shit. I'm forgetting the name of it, but it happened to be like two or three minutes away from my, you know, from campus. So I happened to pop on over, got super confused about directions, asked some <laughs> guy, found the place eventually, walked in, and I found that the ties were ridiculously cheap. Now, I guess hmm. I should give a bit of background to people who are not familiar with what sample sales actually are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, a whole, you know, a brand will develop their clothing line and then they'll sell their clothes, but eventually the season ends and the new season's clothes have to come in. So, what most brands do with their clothing is, you know, they'll offload it to a company Usually it's places like 260 Sample Sale that, you know, actually specialize in these things. And they'll hold basically a warehouse sale will, where they'll take a whole bunch of these clothes and mark them down pretty significantly. We're talking Black Friday prices here. And these happen throughout the year, basically, within New York. Now, they happen to be clustered more during, you know, end of season and the beginning of the new one. But these things go on pretty much throughout the entire year. So we're talking 60, 70% off, and that's that's not out of the, you know, that's not out of the ordinary. Wow. That's, I don't, I, yeah, I think we don't have any of that here. Maybe it's because, you know, a lot of these 
headquarters uh, for the brands are in New York. You know, I think J. And, Crew is up there. And as Ethan said, if they if we do have them down here, it's not for the brands we're looking for. Oh I yeah, imagine, I imagine that happens a lot with streetwear brands down here. Right. Probably probably not. Yeah, yeah yeah so that's that's one aspect of how you know new york is super cool now like you said that new york is a like a fashion mecca obviously it is because I, I went there and I, i'm sure it's, and I mean, everywhere ethan goes everywhere i go is a fashion mecca no but like you know <laughs> like you've got the drake's there him. you've got the armory there you've got you know um uh you know a carmina just opened up like not a carmina well yeah i think there's a carmina there um what's new Mir- um mirman mirman yeah that opened up in uh, brooklyn you know and how, how do you say that, you know, being in that city influenced your style, you know, going from, you know, getting all this stuff from MFA to, you know, meeting some of these people? Because, I mean, you've met these people before. Yeah, right? I happened to be good friends with the guys over at Drake's purely because oh, I yeah. went Fun. in there one day and I thought, man, these guys are really cool people. And then I proceeded I to... I wish I was friends with them. <laughs> I, I proceeded to go in and bug them until they basically started liking me. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> the good old... Uh parasite way of making friends you know i live they die <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's a great... whoever wins we lose <laughs> <laughs> bbs yeah um, but yeah so well, so yeah, so um it's it's really cool because i think you know going through mfa and all that you get into this reddit hive mind of sorts where <laughs> Sure. Uh, MFA can become. You just wear like unique low chinos and unique low like OCB kill shots. And... Yeah. So <laughs> Clark's Desert Base. Yep. Are they still on that? I so when I no. started looking no. at MFA, you know, they have their uh, they have their MFA uniform of sorts, and they went through a few phases of that. You know, there's MFA uniform version 1.0, which I believe was like, I, that was a little bit before my time, but I think it was just a white OCBD with uh, brown chinos and. Um, white shoes of some sort and then version two i believe uh we started going into uh slim denim uh we had the rise of the clark's desert boot on everyone oh, yeah. hell yeah baby we had yeah because i remember that was probably that was that was probably when i was on mfa because i didn't really i didn't really ever participate i just browsed but i haven't i mean i haven't checked out mfa for several years yeah. and when i was there it was like, yeah, Uniqlo OCBDs or the J. Crew shirt and like Levi's 511s with Clarks. Yeah. Then they went through the whole workwear phase where everyone wanted a, uh, a pointer chore coat. And then. Hell uh, yeah. I mean, I think Street Express just went through that phase because now yeah. <laughs> all of us have one. Yeah. So. You know, brands like Carhartt and Carhartt Work in Progress were like all over there. And then they started going to right. uh, Saint Laurent Paris with the uh, with the SLP aesthetic. Hell, and I still love that shit. So yeah, they're they're all really really cool versions of just casual wear, and it really opens your yeah. mind to like what types of well, casual because, there, there are. Because I mean, the whole point of MFA is like it's not like uh, this is a place where like experts go to like talk about fashion. It's like it, for the most part, it's about you know the basics, right? Just getting guys kind of like you know who know nothing about clothes into clothes. It's exactly right? that. And the thing is, because of that, you know, a lot of the same advice gets repeated there. And so MFA yeah. is a really good place for people to start to learn how to dress better, but it does drive you into a bit of a rut. Now, they've been a little better about that in the recent years, but when I was on it, it was very much just, you know, this is what you wear, and you can wear other things, but, you know, this is basically what you wear. So going to New York hmm. was interesting because... You know, NYU itself is already a very liberal school as well, but it's in the heart of New York, in like Greenwich Village mm-hmm. of all places too. Hmm. So, you know, stuff that you know you could see on someone in you know another state school of some sort, maybe out in the Midwest, and like you, know, you could wear something ridiculous, and everyone would be like staring at you the entire day, and maybe your professors right, yeah. would be like, "What are you wearing?" <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. That's I wouldn't say it's necessarily normal at NYU and in New York, but Uh the most you'll get is maybe a slight eyebrow raise, and then people Mm. will continue on their way. So it's really interesting because, uh, because of like you know people are freed of that sort of maybe judgment, people are much more willing to be experimental in their styles and much more willing to be, you know, more flamboyant, possibly Mm -hmm. just playing around with a lot more silhouettes. I think I've seen way more Rick Owen stuff in New York than I've seen anywhere else. Not that that's terribly surprising now that I think of it, but there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that, you know, people just wear on the street. And the most that people will give is like, 
maybe an eyebrow raise, occasionally a double take, but that's about it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I was in that, you know, in that environment, I mean, I'm not exactly sure how my fashion would have, you know, evolved or if it would have been the same as it is now, because where I went, I think I went to school um, right when joggers started to come out, like, what, 2013, (laughs) I think, something like that. So it went from... I don't think anyone really wore the MFA uniform. I think, like, you know, there was a couple of, like, what, when girls would be like, oh, look at that cute guy. He's wearing, like, desert boots with, like, jeans or whatever. And then and then you got more of, like, the joggers with, uh, I don't know, Yeezys maybe or, like, Adidas or – I've even seen, like, Chino joggers worn with, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Boat shoes and, like, a, oh, a print short sleeve shirt. And there is a there is a starter pack somewhere that says, like, oh, every Filipino college boy. And that's exactly <laughs> – what the fuck people were wearing because i mean my school is in southern california and you know i went to one of the most diverse schools in the country i think you know it's it's called la sierra university it's 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 a private christian college but apparently we have a lot of like like you know different ethnicities or whatever but that that was basically what people wore and obviously as a guy who was getting into menswear or you know i gent gq whatever you want to call it you know, wearing floral shirts with a tie <laughs> and, you know, skinny chinos, sockless with, uh, I don't know, cheap Aldo loafers. Um, that definitely raised some eyes yeah. and raised some, raised some eyebrows, I, I should say. And, raise um, your eyes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. eyes were just, <laughs> they just grew lifted. stocks. Yeah. <laughs> Ten feet high. There you go. Oh, uh, but, yeah, you know, I sometimes I wish, you know, what would... I wonder what we, what it would have been like if I went to some you know went somewhere else. Well, I will because, say uh, that because of all these different styles and because right. I had my eyes opened in a sense, and I thought you know wow, I I thought this was completely ridiculous before, but seeing it in person now, like I kind of get it. Like there's only so much that you can get from a still photograph of someone. Right. Um, mm-hmm. There's no movement, so you don't really really get a sense of like the drape of what someone is wearing. You know, regardless of yeah. whether it's menswear or not. You don't have right. a really good sense of necessarily how the clothes are looking in different lighting, too, because a lot of the pictures that you see on MFA, like, some of them are taken very nicely, but a lot of them, and Thanks. admittedly most of mine, yeah, you do a good job. <laughs> a lot of the other people, aka me, have terrible lighting because they don't have people to take photos <laughs> for them or a handy tripod. So Shout out to my you, tripod. Do you guys want to know my plug. problem really quick? Sure. What's your problem? In my room, like I literally like it's it's almost impossible that you could get a decent full body selfie in the mirror because the mirror or the the so when I shut the blinds, it's too dark and I can't see anything even if all the other lights on and if I open the blinds, it looks like Jesus is behind me and you also can't see anything. Don't you want Jesus to be behind you? Don't you want to be no. bathed in his light? It's Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, that's my that's my problem. So I mean, I, on the subject, I guess we're, if we're going to talk about, like, outfit <laughs> pictures, uh, I would always <laughs> have my friends there. take it, you know, I think, because I think it started out as I got a camera to do films, and then I got into fashion, and I saw stuff on Tumblr, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to copy that, so I would, like, I would, like, be candid, I'd be, like, walking, and be like, have my friend take, like, a million pictures of me walking, I'll pick one, and I'll post that on Tumblr, and then eventually I couldn't have my friends take my pictures anymore, so then I bought a tripod. And I, by then, I already kind of knew how photography works, so it was pretty okay from that point on. And, and also, just... your poses changed a lot, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They definitely have. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I, I think there's a really big difference between seeing it on as a picture and then seeing them in mm-hmm. person. And because definitely. I am, I am very sure that people think that I am, you know, I, I am a nerd. But, you know, seeing a guy in a suit, you know, with his hands behind his back is kind of like, oh, who the hell is this guy? But then when you see me in person, I hope to think that people will be like, oh, this guy's like a normal dude, you know? Yeah. Like yeah he's not. The- he's not like walking like like a fucking robot with his, <laughs> you know, always proper, making sure his pants don't, you know, fuck up or my shirt pants must crease exactly this way. Error four hundred four. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, yeah, there are so many things that, like, you know, I would see, I would see someone wear online. It's like, ah, oh, that's kind of cool, but you know, yeah. I don't know, I'm not sure it's for me. But then I see it, I see either the product like in a store in person, and I'm like, oh my god, I need this, or someone I know gets it, and I'm then I'm like, oh my god, I need this. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> the, going back to New York, yes, exactly, going back to New York, though, that's a really yeah. big reason of why 
um, I really don't like doing any online shopping. Now, I was, uh, huh. my parents and I, you know, when we buy things, we go into every purchase, like, thinking that we're not going to return anything. We hate doing returns. I hate standing yeah, in line to too. do returns. So online shopping is just even worse. You know, people are like, make sure that they have a good return policy. And I'm here like, dude, just don't return anything at all. That's the best return policy. Yep. That's that's some commitment there. Yeah. I get buyer's remorse like pretty. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's like <laughs> something small or if it's like something, you know, like vintage or whatever. I'm always like, I did I, do I need this? And honestly, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, on, like we were talking to the guys from PJT. Um, and then, you know, we were talking about how, you know, how much of a clothing nerd we all are. And that in the end, uh, you only need like a navy suit, maybe mm-hmm. a, and, like a brown sport coat and then like a plain shirt and like a black knit tie or a navy knit tie. And that'll get you through like almost anything. And then Interview. honestly, in California, you don't need that. <laughs> like yeah, in exactly. Southern California, you yeah. don't even so need that. So every purchase that I have is like superfluous. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's why I have like such a huge wardrobe and like no money. Um, yeah, and I wish I had a huge money and no wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if we were really being serious there. Yeah. But um but yeah, so Derek, what would you say is your style now? Like, you know, after you went from MFA to expanding a little bit through going to New York and experimenting, like what what would you say it is now? Um it's interesting. I went through a few phases, but now I think I've settled on something that, you know, I'm just really focusing on classic menswear and uh right. You know, I read a ton of blogs, so I usually get tips from blogs like Permanent Style, Thai Workwear, and uh, they do this really interesting thing where they're basically taking, like, the principles of just menswear as a whole and just making it uh, more accessible to everyone, I think. And by doing that, you know, you really want to stay within the middle of the pendulum of fashion because trends tend to swing very heavily from one side and then the other side of the spectrum. But if you occupy a space somewhere in the middle then you know mm-hmm. you'll never be too far out of fashion in a sense yeah right so what's a typical outfit for you then like what's what's your menswear uniform i guess typical outfit for me would usually be you know a shirt always um oh, no oh, t-shirts so. here <laughs> <laughs> um usually i'm liking plain colors a lot more i had a lot of uh patterns in my wardrobe and because of that i realized that it, it's never super exciting to get plain colors, but you kind of need them because otherwise you a lot of patterns just don't work well together and you have to mm-hmm. think a lot about it. I know, Ethan, you're a big proponent <laughs> of mixing patterns all the time. Oh, yeah. Personally, Not today, though. Personally, for me, it gets a little bit cluttered. So I've recently been sticking a lot more to um, combinations of uh, plain, you know, plain patterned or non-patterned clothes, I guess. So usually it'll be a pair of uh, mid to high-rise trousers, a dress shirt, and um, ideally a sport jacket of some sort, unless I want to do something a little bit different. Occasionally I'll switch it up with a uh, a turtleneck, because these days it's been a little bit colder. Yeah, I mean, didn't you guys yeah. have, like, a blizzard? Like, Yeah, it was, it was pretty inconvenient. <laughs> oh, sure. Man, I think trip. the rain is inconvenient. <laughs> so I can't yeah, imagine no, what it would okay, be Okay, like. so Ethan, I'm going to call you out for a second. Yeah. On an Instagram thing recently, you said it's like, oh, why can't it rain more often? But every time it rains, you're like, god damn it, why is it raining? Now I have to hold, plan my whole outfit around well, this. Well, okay, because, okay, number one, like, <laughs> I I don't have, like, like, Spencer he gets to walk to his, like, his car in his garage. But, like, for me, anytime I go somewhere, I have to, like, you know, walk in the rain carrying all my shit before I can get into my car. Mm. And so it's kind of like, oh, shit, it's going to rain. Well, I don't want to bring my whole bag with me. I don't want to wear too many layers because, you know, when stuff gets in the rain, it gets soaking wet. And then it affects everything else underneath it or it retains water. It's just – it's a hassle. I like it in theory. Like, if I'm – if I'm, like – not doing anything and i can like if i'm not gonna take a picture and i'm just like hanging out yeah sure the rain's cool whatever but i'm probably always taking a picture i've always got something (laughs) to do i've always got my laptop with me i've got you know i've got a whole bunch of shit so that's why i just so i can't imagine what it would be like if i had fucking snow or Mm -hmm. wind or whatever so earth wind and fire yeah i think when you i think when you live here in canada you just learn to deal with the snow no, no, it's uh, I and I grew up with it, so it's just it's just another thing that you just have to step over, I guess. Yeah, yeah. well, I've 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 grown up with 
over 100 degree weather in dry <laughs> heat. So take that, Canada. <laughs> take that, Canada. Yeah, bitch. Um, <laughs> but, okay, so where do you get all your stuff now? Because I know that you just got Carmina's, right? Or Meerman? I don't know. I think he posted something. Yeah, so I happened to, uh, I happened to find those uh, used. And so I... Uh, since I had recently gotten some money from Chinese New Year, I happened to spend it on that. Um, and then most of my things, you know, I'm getting stuff from Spear McKay. Nice. Always a big favorite. They're ridiculously good value. Like, I recommend them to everyone I know, honestly. (laughs) Um, yeah, mainly it's just consolidating stuff slowly making sure that like i really need something before i get it like in terms of my wardrobe seeing you know uh if What's i that like <laughs> yeah it's a it's oh a tweed bit i'm different. gonna buy that right now i don't <laughs> care if i have three tweed jackets already i think it's a little bit different in terms of our situations but uh yeah yeah so you know i try to i try to limit myself too because um having to move from dorm to dorm as well um, oh yeah it's you know if i have a huge huge wardrobe then it's obviously going to take up a lot of space so i mm-hmm. am trying to you know keep things to what i really like what things occupy a hole within my wardrobe so that i can uh really just keep it concise but still flexible as much as i can interesting that's cool man and i guess but before we get into our topic of discussion before we get to the break i just gotta ask so like <laughs> What's it like, you know, now, I know you talked about how, like, you stay kind of in the middle of fashion, you know, you're not super trendy, you do classic menswear, but, you know, what's it like as a college student dressing up the way you do? Um, I think I'm definitely known as that guy who will dress up a little bit more. Hmm. I think we all are. Yeah. Well, I think okay. if, if you're ever that we, guy, it we, we should, yeah. at some point, we should, you know, maybe not right now, but maybe when we get to our... Uh, actual topic we can get into it but the if we haven't already talked about it a little bit already but the uh you know la and new york are so different when it comes to fashion so it's like here we stand out because like sometimes when i go to class like i'm the only one wearing like a button up is that the same experience for you like i think it's a little different because um here it's either the reactions I get are either, are you in Stern, which happens to be in the business school. Yeah, that may, mm-hmm. I've heard that. I think you told me that, yes. or I think some other guy. Yeah, that and, I'm, and it happens there. to have a bit of a reputation, too. So, um, yeah. Or the other reaction I'll get is, you know, do you have something to go to today, like an event? Or alternatively, yeah. why aren't you in Midtown? <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. Do, but do you, do, you, are you, do you have friends that are all into uh, menswear? Um, I mean, besides like you know the Drake's guys that you see, but other than like, them, other than them, not not so much. I mean, it's it, because New York also happens to be like very streetwear heavy. Um, mm, a lot of people mm-hmm. will default to joggers. A lot of deep, uh, people will like default to more casual styles as well. Right. So it's certainly a lot more fashionably influenced, but not necessarily in terms of dressing up in formality. And again, I think it really is just. I I just happen to be more at home in a colored shirt, and I like ties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're you're uh, you do it your way. Yep, exactly. Is that Bird a fast King. food? Yeah, there we go. I was like, which, which fast food one is that? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, we're gonna take a short break right now, and then we're gonna get back with our topic. So, stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back to Style and Direction. Now, today we're going to be discussing, uh, like I said in the beginning, how to create like your own style within classic menswear. Because again, we talked to a couple of different guys, um, namely Josh, who has kind of a different style than contempt, you know, than uh, conventional menswear. But I thought it'd be nice to talk about, you know, back, you know, bring it back to sartorial stuff, you know, suits, ties, yeah, take taking it back, tailoring, take take a T in that B, as I call it, and um, you do call it that a lot. That's all I think about. <laughs> um, but, you know, we've got our guest, Derek, here. And, Derek, why don't you, again, why don't you go over, like, how do you make your style your own? Because, you know, we all, when it comes down to it, we all wear a sport coat or a suit, a button-up shirt and a tie. But how do you, how would you define your own style? Let's let's start with that. That's definitely fair. Um, hmm, how would I define my own style? That's a good question. And Thanks. I'm not going to be able to give a good answer because, honestly, <laughs> I still think... As with most things, you know, my style is always evolving. 
Yeah, but, I um, get. I feel you, bro. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> married what's me too. Interesting, I think like you can broadly determine and like define style. It's like like I'm talking really broadly here as just what people like to wear and what preferences people have. So you know, there's you know, some people will enjoy putting elements of workwear into their style, like what Ethan right. is like doing right now. If you want his yeah, blog, I'm sure you'll see really good examples of that. Here's a plug. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Ethan Newton, guys. Follow follow Ethan Desi on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how about how about you know? I know that the articles he sent us because to prep for the for this, I asked Derek to send us you know a couple of articles that kind of you know coincide with his philosophy and how to develop your own style. And you know they do mention like Alessandro Scarzi, uh, Ethan Newton as guys who incorporate like workwear and denim into their looks. But what about you know? suit styles like suit you know styles. not 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 incorporating too much work wear yeah so this is interesting um you know you can i think within actual formal wear you know suits that sort of thing within menswear i like to think of like styles as i like to put things in general just like on a spectrum where you have okay. like, one end of a spectrum being say more casual and more discordant things uh-huh. so for example you have stuff like Brunello Cuccinelli, um, uh-huh. who, by the way, like I love his brand. He does amazing things. And so Brunello Cuccinelli himself, the man, does a lot of things <laughs> the where... The man, the myth, the legend. He does a lot of things where he'll combine a lot of informal things with formal things. And you'll see it a lot like within his runway stuff, within his collections as well. If you go like... If you happen to be near a store of his, which is amazing i love his place right. oh my gosh i mean i'm near soho so like that's one of my favorite places to like stop by when i have time they mm-hmm. do stuff like combining double-breasted jackets with like joggers and usually i'm not a huge fan of it but somehow Brunello works. works his magic and it works i mean so like yeah in that in that die workwear article i think he even says like oh i'm always wearing jeans but i always wear it with a sport coat and a tie because mm. i like I like that discordant thing, you exactly. know. Like, so, and you know, it's, he, he like does, he, he doesn't does wear denim with sneakers. It's like that's too on the nose. Like you gotta make it like. And it's and, I and thought it's that was really wash cool. and it's light wash denim. Yeah, like it's the most really, informal, really I guess, light wash jeans. denim. You know, it's cut perfectly, so it's not like, you know, really ugly dad jeans, but it's light wash denim, and he pairs it with like, you know, a smooth, not worsted wool, but like a smoother, dark navy double breasted jacket with like right. brass buttons and it's like it seems jarring at first but the way that he pairs it with everything else you know he has mm-hmm. you know the shoulders are still really like nice and relaxed um right somehow like the buttons that he has the brass buttons but somehow they don't remind you of the like the navy and it, i don't know it just works out really well so you know there's that sort of style on one end uh-huh. where it's right. uh playing around with like uh casual and uh, informal styles like that. Mm-hmm. And then you have the other end, which is, you know, I'd say it's a lot more British in the sense that it's like, you know, let's stay with the classics, stay yeah. very elegant, stay very, uh, quote unquote, dapper. Gosh, I hate <laughs> that term, but Me I'm gonna too. go yeah, along. I think with we're it. gonna have an entire episode about that at some, at some point. Oh man, you you could write a whole book on this subject. <laughs> I so. hate da- dandy. Is our new book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am not dandy. Yeah. yeah, I am so. not Spock. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there's you know there's stuff like that where uh, people stay a lot more rooted in tradition, and right. I think you know there's certainly other aspects and other extremes. But if you mm-hmm. if you have these two like on a spectrum, you can pretty much place almost anyone within a space on this spectrum. Yeah, and so based off of that, you know, then you sort of see you know I I personally think that a style should really reflect your own preferences and because it uh-huh. reflects your own preferences everyone else's style is going to be inherently different it, it may be mm-hmm. really similar to someone else's but because of all the experiences that you yourself as a person have had and all the preferences that you yourself as a person have had and all the you know other things that have impacted your life and mm-hmm. the connotations that you have with certain items you're gonna develop your own personal style and it's not gonna come quickly because life doesn't happen quickly right yeah but do you think it's easier then to be more discordant and have a style than say if you wore a suit the whole time? Because something that I've that I've learned from I guess going from MFA is that oh when you wear a suit it's hard to be playful without you know resorting to like okay I'm gonna wear 
fucking light wash jeans and like sneakers or wearing them with joggers you know how do you create and your when, style when with you just say that tailoring? It's hard, really quick when you say that it's hard to like be playful are you talking about like is, well, is that like from the perspective of people who don't wear wear suits a whole lot well i guess i guess yeah like you know like how do you how do you look stylish in a suit you know, mm-hmm. like, I, I can have your own personal style because, like, like I said before, like, it when it comes down to it, you are wearing, like, a shirt, a tie, a, yeah. a jacket. You know, how did – obviously, you, you see a business guy and then you see a guy wearing a sport coat with jeans. You're like, oh, th- you you might think one guy is more stylish, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, so but this, I, think, I think, you know, is there a way to reconcile that within classic tailoring? So I guess I that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. My own personal view on that is that one thing that it is imperative that you have to, you know, distinguish is style – undercase s as in like everyone's personal own style right and you know style capital s which is like this person is stylish this person has a style this person has loads like like loads of sprezzatura and like you know oodles and oodles just dripping of swag. with <laughs> just noodles of swag noodles of swag <laughs> so basically like you know um i think um i think it is possible to have your own personal style and still be stylish even if you are more on the conservative end of things i mean look at uh, simon mm-hmm. crompton is my favorite example of this um and i read his blog permanent style like like a freaking bible like i <laughs> i freaking love his blog oh my gosh um i met him in person and i had the chance to like freak out and fanboy and <laughs> he took it very very gentlemanly as a proper british person Hello, um, I'm Simon Crompton. Yeah, he's nice. That's my impression. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty decent. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think even within that, you know, he wears, you know, odd jackets. He wears a ton of suits. He wears ties. And yet, at the same time, like, there's this certain ease to what he's wearing. And there's mm-hmm. a certain ease to, like, how he's put it together as well. I think having a style and or having having a style your own personal style is as much, you know, the pieces that you select as much as how it is combining them. But uh-huh. I do think that style capital S is more than just the pieces that you have and how you put them together. It's also how the, how you feel in them and mm. how it looks like you feel in them. And more importantly, like just really the, the sort of attitude that you give off and a lot of that comes from the attitude that you yourself are feeling when you are wearing what you are wearing. There's this good video that Ethan and I were watching just the other day mm-hmm. that I think it's it's Simon Crompton in the video, right? Like the men's wear dinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where yeah, it's like a bu- it's it's a bunch of the guys in the men's wear scene in London and elsewhere. Because I mean, the guy from like you know Kamakura shirts is there as well, right? Yes. No. 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 Not Kamakura. No. no. no it's it's um, um Kamoshida. 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 Yeah. Okay. My bad. Whoops. Um. But yeah. Anyway, it's like the video is essentially just them at a dinner, and intercut with the scenes of the dinner, is like each person there kind of talking about their own personal approach to style, and you know as we were saying, if you look at it broadly, yes, they are for the most part wearing, you know, uh, let's just call them. You know, as as I think Socrates once said, man is a a featherless bird. Uh, man, I love that so great sky. Yep. Uh, let's just say let's just say that the jackets they're wearing they're just lapel jackets, so like you know suits or sport coats or whatever. Um, about like you know seventy five percent of them are wearing the tie, a tie. The rest of them are maybe doing something a little bit more edgy. But yeah, they go into all the details about why they chose their particular outfit and they really go into okay so this is kind of similar to this guy's look but this is how it's different like this is how i approach it and i think that's you know that's a good that's a that's a good way to illustrate how even if you're all wearing similar pieces it can be very very different that's yeah. true wait yeah. personally i always um i was talking this with aldis and we were you know discussing the difference between having good style and having a good outfit And, you know, maybe, again, it's probably personal taste, but, like, I don't really see... Because I can't think of... When I think of Simon Crompton, I think of, you know, yeah, permanent style, but I don't really see his personal style. Like, I don't really know how to describe 
what he's wearing. Like I can describe probably Jake Grantham or, you know, uh, Kamoshida or, you know, uh, who else was at that thing? James Jonathan Turner. Like I, I, I think that those guys have a distinct style that I can see, you know, it's, it's very mm-hmm. describable, but like some guys that are not, you know, like, I can't, you know, that that's where my, I guess, where I come from. Like, I think that having great personal style is that being able to notice it from, like, a distance, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, I mean, yeah. again, it also depends so on your sounds, personal taste. It but. sounds like it's a lot about consistency with you. I, I guess so. I mean, but Simon is very consistent. Like, you know, he's very particular in how he likes his jackets cut. You know, I guess he prefers... He doesn't really do anything too crazy. I think I, I'm sure that Derek can probably attest to. Like, he's not... I, which is why I was surprised when he did like his first Livrano bespoke jacket was like a purple one. I think. Yeah, he's done some crazier things, and uh, I think you know the blog itself is about ten years old, and he's been doing bespoke for about that time. So, right. you know, when he was getting into bespoke, he had a ton of that like really ridiculous stuff. You know, his his Livrano jacket was like purple, and he later uh, had a post on like what things that he actually wears a lot and what things he doesn't. He mentioned that he doesn't really love like he doesn't wear the uh, the purple jacket as much as he'd like. Just because huh. it's one of those really recognizable things, and he's stated that his own personal style uh-huh. is one in which he he wants to, as he puts it, he wants to whisper and not shout, and oh, it, it's it's very, you know, again, it's very it's very proper British in the sense that he wants to stiff upper lip. He wants to be known for always being well dressed, but not enough that people point him out in a crowd and say, "Oh, hey, look at that guy. He's well dressed." Like well, enough that people would only think that I in their mean, heads. See, I mean, I I can agree with that, but then there are people like, like Jake Grantham who doesn't do anything crazy either. Like you know, he just wears like double breasted suits or whatever. But I see like I can tell what his thing is, and it might just be how he carries himself. You know, like those old pictures from the armory where he's like slouching, hands in his pockets or whatever. But I feel like I I get that I that icon aesthetic from Jake, while I don't get that from Simon. And if Simon listens to this, I'm sorry. Um, but cool guy. Simon's <laughs> listening to this. I'm a huge fan. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know Some stuff like that. Pages. You know. But like even like the, you know, in the uh, in the dye workwear article, like they talk about Mark Cho, and I think that Mark Cho, while some of his stuff can be a little bit conservative sometimes, like I think he's got a style too. You know, like he can be a style icon in his own right. Like he experiments with jackets. He does a little bit of, like. I guess Japanese Americana, but a little bit more. He loves subdued. the yellow Oxford shirt. He love, yeah, he loves that. You know, he has a penchant for like, you know, sometimes a little bit of crazy tie. Um, definitely some crazy jackets um, that I've noticed. You know, mm-hmm. not in the crazy in the sense of like, you know, fucking like batik jackets, but you know, yeah. some, a little bit out there than what you would have assumed for a. Uh, I think a with Simon, man, I guess. okay, and uh, from what I've is this know, talking about Simon now? <laughs> partially, <laughs> I mean, no, this it, is just it, it one sense. example, but. I think for one example of him is that he uh, I've noticed he likes to go a little bit more flashy with his overcoats. You know, he's spoken. Mm. Oh, that is true. That is true. He's spoken a lot about, you know, the uh, the drama of an overcoat. He's got he's got one from like Connolly, I believe it is, where it's a lot. It's a little more like fashion inspired. And you can tell, you know, it is a lot more of a dropped shoulder. And it's like this beautiful shade of gray. And like in the photos that he has, like you can see how well it drapes and just like flows around. But then he also has like. Other things, like, uh, he commissioned some interesting, uh, like, pea coat, uh, guards bridge coat thing, which is, like, a slightly longer pea coat, basically. And it had some interesting small details on that that, uh, you know, he seemed really passionate about in his writing. And there's another one where he's got a, a really long, dramatic overcoat from Edward Sexton that's, oh, like, yeah. charcoal and, like, it's got really strong shoulders so I think in those pieces, you know, he shows his own style in that way. So I guess going by your own definition of style, like, it's really, um, you know, what people prefer. But also I think it's just what people are slightly more passionate about than the average person, maybe. I guess that makes sense because, like, I mean, obviously, I think my style is very, you can define it. You know, it's very vintage-inspired. Yeah. Um, it's it's striped shirts and patterned ties. TM. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of other people do that too. But I feel like, uh, like I don't want to toot my own horn, but like I I, I make that aspect my own, because mm-hmm. 
you know, it surprises me a lot of how people are so opposed to vintage style when it's so, to me at least, it's so similar to what regular people wear. Like, you know, when I see a guy at Drake's wearing one of their bangle striped shirts with some of their crazier patterns, spring ties, I'm like, what's the difference between that and me wearing like a bold 40s tie with well, one of I my think spirit it, points? It's, it's mostly because people don't really know about vintage style other than what they've maybe seen in like period pieces or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's definitely like they have true. Like a, yeah, and it's like I'm I'm not trying to say everyone has to like vintage style, but I think that uh, kind of comes from just a place of not really knowing what it is. You know, yeah, I, mean, I will that... I will be the first to say that I, as much as I love your blog, I'm not a huge huge fan of vintage styling in its entirety. You know, I I get that you really like dropped notch lapels and like Hell having yeah, them do. like a lot wider than what they usually are, but. Personally, no, I'm not a huge fan of that myself, but I do recognize that, you know, it's your style, and I will also say that, you know, I think those sorts of details are things that, you know, people don't think, like, very actively about these lapels are, like, a lot different of a shape than these other more modern lapels, and this notch is way, way, like, three quarters of an inch lower, or that's actually not a lot, but... Okay, because, like, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot during this discussion, and, you know, this is a podcast mostly cater to menswear nerds so i'm not sure how many but without the stuffiness y- yeah sure uh, <laughs> that's our slogan uh so i'm not sure how many uh outsiders are listening but it's like you know you you could we talk about like okay there are you know differences between all these different styles like you know you know um but i i feel like other than us like people who are into it Nobody can can discern those differences. Like to them, like a suit is just a suit. Oh yeah, you know, something that I thought of right now also is that would people have noticed it if I didn't say it was vintage? Like there are guys out there mm-hmm. who have crazier style than I do. You know, I think like one of the guys from Ring Jacket has some crazy ass jackets, and. You know, and uh, he's celebrated for it. And not saying that, you know, I'm like, oh, no, people should love me. But I feel like it's not too different. Like, like, you know, like I said, and there are times when people assume that my modern stuff is even like vintage <laughs> when I'm like, these are like, I got, you know, these are like Banana Republic pants, you know, and I guess it just by association with me, they think it's vintage and then people are turned off to it, which I think and, is so weird. You and know? then occasionally the opposite happens in the vintage scene where someone will post a picture of a suit or whatever and be like oh is this is this from the 1930s and they're like oh no it's ralph lauren or oh no it's reproduction and they're gonna be like gross yeah (laughs) just like immediately or it's like oh this is actually like 70 a really good 70s does 30s and then people are like oh i hate it now even though five seconds before they were like oh this is cool is this is this from the 30s I yeah, think that's because, true. Um, I mean, because like drop yeah. notch, like drop notch uh, lapels. That's, I mean, it might not be as common, but there are bespoke tailors who still do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there are still guys who do like wide leg. I mean, I've seen a couple of guys who do wide leg pants or who still wear crazy ties, and I, and they don't get anything weird from it. But because it's like me, like who does who actually wears like the old stuff and then tries to make it a bit more contemporary like it's like whoa this guy this guy's the vintage guy and i'm like how is it that different like it's not yeah it might be vintage but you know it's not all that different well it's probably just because like for the most part i mean is there is there anyone in in the contemporary men's we're seeing with the exception of like the bryceland's guys who collect you know pre like i think that might be yeah that might be it because some of the guys who actually do it like they actually just do it through bespoke they don't they don't mm-hmm. get it like they don't wear the original stuff and i'm sorry if i can't you know <laughs> afford, <laughs> afford it yeah you know? i think part of it is just the fact that like vintage doesn't have a, a huge huge presence within you know the instagram menswear scene and a yeah. lot of people who do like the vintage stuff that are in the menswear scene you know they do happen to be of that you know socioeconomic status that they can afford or rather maybe they can afford through money and they can't afford through time to go through and be searching for these items and so they think hey i might as well just you know go through the bespoke process and get something that i want exactly to my specifications in exactly the fit that i want in exactly the color and cloth that i want too and, and so I think I think that, right now yeah, we're kind of getting a that. little bit of a, off topic. Right. Right. One more quick but I guess yeah. So to put us back on topic, I just so, for me because it's such a you know vintage is so different. I think I always I gravitate toward guys who tend to go you know with that 
you know that very distinct way of dressing you know yeah um like I, um yeah. who, who are some other style icons you know like i mean ov- obviously for me my style icons you know like jake grantham obviously the bryson's guys but if we're talking like contemporary i think it's pretty much like jake like i i, I feel like the, the way he carries himself is so i guess dramatic in the sense that it's He's not dramatic, but it feels dramatic. I guess maybe just so people <laughs> and take pictures of him in that way. And a big part of it is, I mean, I know you guys already mentioned this in another one of your podcasts, but right. going back to the oh, whole topic back. of Sprezzatura, oh, you know, yeah, going exactly, back to that yeah. whole video, a lot of the people in that uh, men's were uh, in the, oh gosh, what was that video called? I think it's the... the uh, uh, style dinner? Style dinner or something along those yeah. lines. I don't my, know. My it's dinner style something. With style it's <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're gonna dinner. call our version uh-huh. <laughs> um yeah so a lot of them were talking about how every, like you have to have a certain degree of nonchalance and sprezzatura yeah. about yourself and i do think that that really is a big part of it it's a lot of it is just having the confidence to own up to what you like mm-hmm. um having the confidence you know to maybe not exactly be jenny and nelly and like have your watch over your wrist cuff but i think a big part of like what goes into Sprezzatura is also just, you know, a lot of things that they did with Sprezzatura were just practical things that they happen mm-hmm. just to not really care right. about other people's, you know, preferences. Oh yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like if you, if you go back onto Ethan's blog, onto the, uh, New York city menswear post and look at the picture that I have there, one of them, uh, you can see on my right wrist, I have what, may look to be a wristband or a bracelet on first glance but it's literally a rubber band huh why do i have a rubber band on my uh, on my wrist because i happened to have opened a package earlier today that or earlier that day that had a rubber band on it and <laughs> i was like i'm not gonna throw this thing out this could be a cool thing to fiddle with so i slipped it on my wrist and i didn't yeah. even realize so that i still had it fidget on spinners could be incorporated into menswear yeah. how do we do this tie clip fidget this, spinner this is, cuff this is, fidget spinner. <laughs> this is the, the future <laughs> oh man i'm gonna go on shark tank oh no this. Yeah, oh, my God. bespoke yeah but a, it, a bespoke lapel pin that doubles as a fidget spinner but yeah i totally get where you're coming man we should have talked about this on the spread satira episode because right. it's like my you know I always have like a ton of stuff in my pockets. Like well, I always carry yeah. a pen with me. I always carry a notebook with me. It, it sort if of I'm leads out, if into I'm... the style thing. So like we'll we'll keep it in here. I think. Yeah, but it's like if you know if I'm if I'm on reporters' business, I always have like like my tape recorder, all my business cards, like all that stuff, like stuffed in my pockets. And sometimes, sometimes you know, like when when I'm going to work or whatever, I usually keep a book in my pocket or like a copy of a newspaper. And yeah. um, I know one of my coworkers prefers to keep his pockets sewn shut because he doesn't want anything to happen to them. And he's like, man, you're carrying, you're carrying a lot today. I'm like, buddy, I'm just living my life. Yeah, that's, that's really it. I think, I, I think that's a big thing of it. You know, it's just living in your clothes and being comfortable enough that, you know, you, you don't think so much about, you know, I, I have a, uh, I have an overcoat from Sabrina McKay that I, love and i wear almost every day and now i discovered uh much to my horror on the plane back to canada that i have a little bit of a uh, of a hole in it right now and i oh, probably no. need to get that stitched up but at the same time it's like you know that that comes through wear um yeah i have the, the inner pockets are pretty sagging right now because i put a lot of nice. things in there you know i put my pens oh, in there buddy, I put my that's wallet what we want there. Yeah, and it's it is noticeably a thing you know if i look down i can see that the line is not straight but you know, I, I, I get that through wear. And I think a lot of that is um, I personally can come to terms with that a lot more than, you know, some other people may not be able to. And I think a big part of that comes from my uh, my own history with work wear and raw denim. So hmm. I was actually really into raw denim and still kind of am, admittedly. I feel bad that I don't really wear my jeans much right now because trousers are the secret sweatpants that actually look really good. <laughs> Yeah, you heard it here first, guys. But yeah, I don't. Okay, th- okay. So, a uh, quick sidebar, like guys are like, "Oh man, these you know dr- dress pants are so uncomfortable. How do you wear them?" Or like whatever. A nice pair of like well-fitting flannels is super comfortable. Definitely, I will say it takes a while to get used to the high waist, and I, I definitely I know guess, that when I got yeah. my suit supply suit for prom, I was like, "Man, these things go so high up." 
But eventually, like, I think you just get used to it. And then yeah. after a while, high-waisted stuff feels really good. Yeah, low-waisted stuff. I remember that I pooped me. so much when I first started wearing <laughs> high-waisted pants because of the pressure on my stomach. Hopefully but then now it's like, I, poop, I go back to pooping normally, so it's all good now. I'm, I'm glad your is bowel movement has... Ethan? I'm, I'm no, that is not a joke. I literally, when I first started wearing it, when I went to Banana Republic, I started wearing stuff at my belly button. I was in the restroom to so be, to much. To be clear, this was, this was outside your pants, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to talk about it. Is, how is this why you buy pants. vintage so you don't poop your normal pants? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, I I guess, I, you know, I, I was wearing vintage for a while, but I never wore it every day until, I don't know, like two years ago. Um, and... So I wasn't used to high waisted until then. Like if I did, I you know I'd wear it to like an event, and then you know it just never occurred to me that I pooped or wasn't pooping or whatever. <laughs> but then yeah, it took a while to get to get used to. Yeah. Um, let's let's but, get back to personal. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Back, so okay. Back on track. Why, don't so we, I was, why don't we talk about? Um. Uh, wait. Actually, Derek, why don't you go? Yeah. Ahead no, so I was. I was. Um. I, I was really into raw denim and stuff. And so for people who are unfamiliar with raw denim, it's basically jeans that have not gone through any washing process after they've been like, you know, come straight from the factory. And so right. there's still a lot of starch usually in the mm-hmm. jeans themselves. And when you put them on, um, they're usually a, a slightly thicker fabric of denim too. So when you first put them on, like it feels like you're wearing cardboard. Yeah. It feels uh, like you're buddy, we cardboard. just got our own cell. We got new salvage. Uh, Congratulations. So. You were in the raw denim world. And so buddy, I've been really in that cool world thing, for years. Yeah. One cool thing about raw denim is the fact that, you know, as you wear it, all the, cr- there's no pre distressing. There's no pre made creases, all the creases that you make eventually. And all the fades that come with indigo washing off as you wash your jeans, that all comes naturally. And so I think, you know, I was really into that scene for a long time. And because of that, I really got into my head this whole, like, concept there's a japanese term that's called wabi-sabi and it's basically referring to how beautifully like things can age like they don't necessarily age you know uniformly like a pair of jeans you know they don't have fades all over in equal areas but Mm -hmm. it's it just it's stuff like you know organically i i i you know with my last pair like there's a pocket where I keep my phone or a pocket or a fade where I like, you know, the outline of my phone or my wallet, all that stuff. So that's kind of that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. So, uh, you know, taking from that whole journey of raw denim, you know, I guess like for me personally, at least like that whole concept of spread satura and feeling comfortable in your clothes and, you know, thereby having style and being a stylish person is really just being so comfortable in it that, yeah, you know, it's going to it's going to accumulate wear and tear. Your pockets are going to sag, you know, you're mm-hmm. uh, you're you know, your elbow might blow out and you need to put a patch on it, like leather patches, and then there you go, you look a little bit preppier. But because yeah. of that, you know, that whole, I am comfortable in what I am in, and I like what I like, and I like what I am in, and therefore I like myself, I think that's I that sort I of am. confidence. Yeah, Descartes said it best. So there you go. that sort of confidence really translates into, you know, having style, capital S. Yeah, I guess so. So how do you how do you find well, like what your style is like? How did like when you when you walk out the door and you're like I am dressed like Derek today? Like what what goes into that for you? Mm, it depends because if it's you know it, it also depends on your context. If it's I am dressed like Derek today in the context of all my other peers, you know the fact that I'm wearing a sport jacket and trousers is already enough. But mm-hmm. if I'm going out to like say uh, to hang out with the guys from Drake's, what is you know my own style as compared to theirs um a lot of it you know obviously a lot of it is what do you have in your wardrobe yeah, yeah. you can't you know you i don't really change i don't have the jackets <laughs> that the drake's guys have so uh you know nope. i could do something along the lines of their style in as best a way as i can with the limited number of options that i have in my own wardrobe but mm-hmm. you know a lot of it is also just um me personally, I really like denim shirts. They're kind of becoming a huge thing Hell within yeah, the menswear dude. community. I kind of only have one, and it's a comic row button zero. down. I really love it. But is it the vintage ivy one? It's not the vintage ivy one. Oh, it's a wait, they have another darker. one? Yeah, it's a little bit of dark wash. It's one of their uh, casual shirts. It's not. It's like small, medium, large sizing, and it's oh, well, that might be the vintage ivy. Well, unless no, they have one. It, it I might have that same shirt, but it's in the. Uh, it's the. Uh, it says Japanese indigo on it. Japan indigo. Something nope, like that. That's not the, that's no, not the vintage it's, it's, one. A, it's another line. I got it a few years ago. And anyway, um, that's the one denim jacket or the denim shirt that I have. But like, I really, really love that shirt. So I wear it like a lot more than I should, honestly. Um, yeah, my own style. I guess it's. 
I'm playing a lot more with solid colors, and I'm really liking tonal outfits. I had a, mm. a, a recent Instagram photo that uh, I took. This was the first time that I actually wore a suit, like, casually. Um, I am more of an odd jacket person, and I only have the one suit that I got at my prom. Um, it's a charcoal suit supply in Napoli, so it's, like, very basic. But I paired mm-hmm. it with a, uh, a thick, chunky, gray cashmere uh, turtleneck that was, incidentally, one of my first sample sale items. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, it's a very tonal ensemble, very soft, because you have, like, um, you've got the grays and the cashmere there, and then I finished it off with the uh, the dark brown Carmina uh, double monks that I picked up recently, and those are suede, too. So, you know, the whole thing is, it's very, like, tonal, and it's very, like, soft. But that's, I think that's something that I'm developing a little more, you know, I might not have a really defined personal style right now. You know, in terms of my friends, they would probably say that my style is that guy who dresses up in jackets and, yeah. you know, <laughs> wears a tie when he doesn't need to. But, you know, within the larger menswear community, I might, you know, I, I might not have a super well-defined style right now. And that's okay because, you know, I'm like, what, 21 right now? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like we were we were talking about earlier, personal style is something that takes a really long time to kind of to right. kind of like develop, and you and have it's to like, develop you know, with your failure. When, yeah, exactly, and it's like you it, you have you have to do. I mean, maybe you know you guys disagree with this, but you have to sort of do the basics before, like what we were talking about with the MFA. It's like there's an MFA uniform because that you know generally looks good on basically anybody, and it's really cheap. And so once you master that, at that point, you could start doing your own thing and kind of, you know, like we keep saying, developing your own style. Yeah, I like to think of it in like in terms of finding the needle in the haystack. Do you mm-hmm. reach in and see the needle and then grab it right away? Or do you like, you know, carve away at it, push over some hay here and say, hey, yeah. well, there's no needle here. There's no needle here. You know, yeah. Eventually, you find something that's shiny and you grab onto it. It's not like... You, know, you don't just stick your hand in there and be like, oh, got the needle. It's all good. Got stabbed. That's so my style. That That's my style. I am the stylish person, you know, the most stylish person on earth right now. No, like it doesn't happen that way. And besides, you know, especially if you start young, like what? We're mm-hmm. like, we're like in our early 20s. If we discover yeah, our yeah. person, if we discover our ideal style right now, where else do we have to go? Downhill. It's yeah. all down. <laughs> it's down. all down here, baby. Here. Mm-hmm. Oh. We go from bespoke suit to birthday suit. <laughs> I came into this world wearing a suit. I'll go out in this world wearing. The that's that's like a reverse <laughs> Benjamin button. It's a Benjamin <laughs> zipper. There you um, go. But Spencer, Benjamin how how button. would you say? What about you? How would you approach you know your personal style? I mean, it, I'm, my personal style is in a period of transition right now. Where before it would be very easy, and I'd be like, oh, I like dressing like a you know a '30s kind of like. I, I, you know, I just like the 30s kind of um, average Joe style or whatever. But right now it's definitely changing because um, I'm, I'm getting much more into obviously contemporary stuff, but then kind of, you know, um, 60s and 70s, like Ivy League casual stuff. Right. So a lot of, you know, I, I, I sent this, uh, I think you were driving, so I'm not sure if you saw it, but I sent this like style form this recent style form article or journal blog post, whatever that's like all about incorporating casual outerwear jackets into classic outfits. And I'm like, hell yeah, that's, that's where I am at. Um, but I mean, generally like here, here's what I have going for me that hasn't, hasn't changed. I mostly wear shade, like different shades of Brown, um, like earth tone, stuff like that. A lot of darker blues, whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I'm into, I'm into the kind of like easy look and not the, uh, what's your advice though? Like, you know, for people who are listening or, Oh, that was the question. (laughs) Whoops. Um, I mean the, the biggest thing is just like find what you're comfortable in, like find something that fits your lifestyle. Like, you know, you don't have to do what we do and wear like classic menswear stuff. If that's not, if, if you like work at the docks or whatever, (laughs) Because you know um, everyone who's not us work on the docks. Yeah, you're either you either work in the fashion industry or you work in the docks. That's what I always say. There you yeah. go. But yeah, just like f- find what I mean. It's 
this is kind of like a cop out answer, but it's like, yeah, just find what works for you. Like f- find, find that little like nugget of stuff that you like and then really hone in on that. And, you know, and I also would say that if you find something that is a little bit out of the ordinary and people give you shit for it, but you really like it anyway, like, and you know, after, after you get over your crippling depression and everything <laughs> that like, Oh no, what's no, that like? My thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you know, it, uh, you know, just one day have the confidence. You know, I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, say it's that like, a little okay, too easily, okay. but because I, I, I think that if you if you find what you really like, and yeah, it's like you dress in weird. <laughs> if it's like some kind of out there, it's gonna be a little bit weird at first. But once you like master it, and once you feel like I got it, that confidence is gonna show through. And I'm a little bit worried that you know we're gonna have a whole new generation of fedora cloak wearing people going around. But at the mm-hmm. same time, you know. Understand the rules, learn the rules, learn how to bend the rules, learn that the rules are more like guidelines than rules. Mm-hmm. And then, like the pirate code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then find what you like, wear it a ton. If you get known as that guy, then, you know. So be it. D- decide whether you want to be that guy or not. Yeah. But more than anything, you know, just, I guess it is, have authenticity in what you wear and what you like. Yeah, don't use, don't use your weird like just make sure you're not using your weird style as a replacement for a personality yeah oh yeah oh my gosh but okay so for me you know if i guess i'll have the last word here <laughs> um i think you know i, I agree with both with what both you guys said i think it's important to be comfortable and everything um but i also think that it's important to experiment mm-hmm. and you know look at everything like that's what i did you know i did not find my personal style it's i mean it's it's still changing i think you know what was it like but when i first really got into menswear it was through the armory like two years ago and then it went from that to basically dressing as a copy of like dick carroll kind of and then now it's like basically an ethan newton copy but you know a lot of that stuff is still what i you know what i own and i've gotten a few you know different items and being able to i guess i'm plugging vintage here but like incorporating you know vintage is a great way to kind of experiment with stuff i'm not saying like vintage as in like suits and you know and tie and um well i guess ties but like not suits and fedoras but you know like getting like you know incorporating like a 90s sweater or something like that you know and and doing it that way is a great way to kind of inject that personality in in a interesting and affordable way as opposed to you know getting a bespoke purple blazer that you do end up not wearing uh, even though you know you like it you know you putting simon yeah. crompton on blast right now <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i mean not a lot of us are able to <laughs> afford that you know and i think i wouldn't have gotten to where i am today if i did not you know thrift a lot of what i have and ebay mm-hmm. a lot and it, and it makes the mistakes you know as even though they all they always hurt when you make that mistake and you have something you don't wear um it makes it a little bit easier you know, when you look back at them, like, oh, I only spent twenty bucks on these, yeah. You know, these cream flannels. Yeah, and, I think um, it's. I think it's a good idea. You know, start small, put a little bit of that thing into your wardrobe as well, because you know, if you're changing stuff right. massively, the people are going to be like, wait, what? But you know, if you put a little bit of it into there, you know, um, I've given a lot of thought to Parisian chic, and one really interesting uh-huh. thing that you know defines Parisian chic because it's such a hard term to define. But what I think I've narrowed it down to is that they're doing a lot of really basic, really, you know, um, conservative looks, things that, like, are proven standards, and giving it this tiny, tiny twist that gives it this sense of, like, oh, I didn't I didn't think you could do that, but somehow it really works. You know, oh, um, yeah, that's... Drake's does this really, really well. Uniqlo does this really well. There's not a lot of stores that I go into that I get that feeling of, like, oh, wait, you can do this this way? And, like, it... It, I, I didn't think so, but it works. Wow. Like, that's the sort of thing that I aim for, I think, in my styling. And, Ethan, mm-hmm. you're doing that pretty well, too, with the uh, with the beret, honestly. I, I wasn't a fan oh, of it yeah. at first. <laughs> but seeing it more and more, I'm like, okay. I mean, I can, I, I, I'm can i getting more used to seeing you in it, and I'm also seeing in your pictures that you, you seem more comfortable in it, too. And, like, I'm starting to drive with it now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was that was me with the, with the beanie thing. Like, <laughs> when you first started doing it, I was like, it's his thing, but I don't think I would do it. And now I own a beanie, and I'm looking at it right now, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> lovingly. Yeah. yeah, I think. See, I think that's that's the important. Part. Oh, I think experimentation. Beanie. You're you the know, one. People, you know, tend to say like, "Oh yeah, do a little bit." But I, I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, I know that you guys aren't as into it as I am, but I 
love experimenting with stuff especially if it's you know again cheap because like the the beanie was you know 30 bucks or whatever which not not cheap isn't the right word but affordable because it's a very high quality beanie from knickerbocker plug um but like the beret was something that my family owned and i was like you know what it's it's not costing me anything you know i i can wear it and i did it and now i i love wearing it i mean i still i have other options to wear i still wear my beanies i still wear my fedoras when it you know when i feel like it but you know i wouldn't have done it you know, I would have never thought to do it if I just didn't take the leap. So mm-hmm. I think combining that whole like, oh, experiment with small things, but also like constantly try new things, you know, whether it is small, you know, try a vintage tie if you like that. Try a collar bar, you know, try that a, a fun tweed jacket, you know, and you might, you know, if you if you like it, you might end up you know wearing it more. And then that can open up new avenues. Yeah, I know? think my like, own my own personal uh, style goal, mini goal mini achievement that's like up on next on the list is when the weather actually gets better i have a uh i have a very you know um v- vibrantly uh actually it's kind of dustier now that i think of it but it's a uh, it's a cotton uh cotton floral tie that i got from a gitman brothers vintage sample sale and it's a little skinnier than i'd like nowadays but right. it's also fairly long and i've been thinking you know given how interestingly patterned this is I think I'm going to go for the whole vintage use the tie as a belt thing. And, like, let's see mm. how it goes. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, it could, maybe it when could you do really that, cool. I'll, I'll give that a try because that's something I don't do. Yeah. Uh, and well, that's I've, or I've that, never you know, tried that. It's definitely that. out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, it's like, how else am I going to use this tie that right. yeah. is honestly a pretty good tie and it's pretty nice, but, like, it doesn't fit my style exactly. So, you know, just, like, think of more creative ways to do things, too. You know, I would just I just thought of, like, I have a couple of ties that I bought while I was in college. Um, and, you know, if, if you do it and it looks good, maybe I'll give it a try, too, because... I'll do it if there, you do it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that I bought. You know, I think when I, um, when I first thought of, like, wearing vintage ties every day, I experimented with buying, like, these floral-ish ties from uh, this... Uh, Canadian company called Dolby. I I I can't remember. Never heard of them. Yeah, but I I don't know if they're if they're still out now. But they were from Arkells of Style. Uh, The he wore some, and they were like you know there's some like Hawaiian print ones. There was some, and I was like, oh shit, that looks super cool. And then I I bought one floral print one, and then one with like owls on it, and it was very (laughs) like you know GQ. But I don't wear. I still I kept them because I spent the money on them. But I just don't wear them because you know they're 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 like they have a thicker lining than I like. They're way long, and you know they just they're not my style. But you know if you that's a cool idea. You know hey, re- yeah. repurposing old stuff. Put put your money where your mouth is and experiment tomorrow. Ooh ooh. Put uh, it on the blog. It's uh it's still cold here. It's not springtime, so <laughs> no, I don't think I'm gonna fair. wear spray, no that whole thing. But you know <laughs> excuse. I I definitely will because I think you know a lot of the stuff. You know, I think we're winding down here. Um, I sometimes get strapped for content on the blog. You know, you know, and it looks like I have a lot because I write sometimes one or two a week. Um, but I'm glad that you know the past year or so I've been able, I've been more comfortable with experimenting with new stuff. You know, mm-hmm. whether it's trying to bring a forty suit into the modern day by wearing it with loafers, or you know, wearing a beret or beanie with tailoring. You know, it's been really cool and. Uh, when I first was in MFA, or I guess not really when I first, but after I got like established as like that suit guy, um, they they were like, oh, you know, Ethan can't bring anything new. But now it's like, oh, Ethan's still constantly going. And I think that's something important for all of us that style is never done. We're always constantly evolving and it's it's always good to experiment. So, And I think this is a good point to call yeah, it. Definitely. That's it. All right. Um, yeah, we want to say thanks to Derek Chan for joining us for this episode. Yeah, thanks. do you have yeah, a plug, Derek? Uh, yeah, plugging Spear McKay because they are freaking awesome. I think it's like can, the fourth one with them now. Honestly, Where can people follow you or uh, whatever? You guys can follow me on Instagram because I have not that many followers. On uh, Instagram, <laughs> I'm at collections underscore of underscore values. Both collections and values are plural because. I'm edgy like that, I guess. Nice. Um, no people scare me. Yeah. Other things to shout out. Um, yeah. Do you have any other, uh, any other, th- any, about just in life, any cool books that you've read or websites? TV. I guess you want to plug. I mean, What's I guess. What's your favorite site on the web? <laughs> Unironically permanent style. <laughs> no, it's totally cool. I, yeah. I freaking like, 
Simon's editorial like style is something that I really really love, and the mm-hmm. fact that he goes so in depth with everything that he does, and obviously like the pictures now are like amazing too. Um, oh, okay, I will shout have out a shout to out. Jamie Ferguson. For shout that out one. to Jamie Ferguson. But shout out to the cloth guide on Permanent Style. If you go on permanentstyle.com, there's a guide to cloth. And mm. if you read through it, you know, it's a little bit jargony and a little bit technical in terms of the weaves and stuff, but it's a really good resource for understanding yeah. the practical aspects of, you know, what makes a twill, like what characteristics do twills have over poplins? And why are twills better in this situation over another one? And what makes a flannel actually a flannel? And why mm. is it better in certain aspects than others? You know, um, Permanent Style is a really good resource for all those like more technical things. I guess I'll plug Dye Workwear as well, which is a, a, uh, a blog that initially was not a fan of workwear, but ironically, the guy, like the author who is also named Derek, um, Ooh, is fun. now yep. more into workwear as well. So both of those blogs I check almost on a daily basis, honestly. And they don't update daily, but I constantly refresh hoping for <laughs> just another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spencer? Um, uh, I'm going to plug, uh, two, well, two pieces of clothing, the Telesen, uh, coverall jacket that I've been wearing a lot recently. Um, great denim jacket. Uh, what, like I was, like, like I said earlier, it really suits my needs. And so that's, uh, nah, thanks. Um, my needs. It's great. So there's that. And then of the, the teenage denim, which I think we, we plugged earlier, but seriously, it's great. It's my favorite. I've I've owned several pairs of uh, raw denim, and this is the probably so far my favorite because it has the highest rise. It has a lot of the details that I'm looking for. The only I've been searching for a pair of high rise denims since you know my, I put my Levi's LVCs 1933s out of co- commission, <laughs> and this is it, baby. Uh, great denim. I'm gonna. Uh, the guided meditation thing I did earlier today, like I said, I wasn't good at it, but you know, it was it was a new experience. I I I might try something like that again. Look look that up. And then this is just because last night I was up until probably about one o'clock writing, and then I like writing an essay, and I had to wake up at like six o'clock or for like uh, seven o'clock for a class. I'm super tired. I'm plug and sleep. Do it. Oh nice. well, yeah, that sounds good. It's around one right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, quick plug, Ethan. Okay. Well, I say I'm gonna plug um, permanent style and dye workwear as well because those guys, you know, not only inspired me to, well, I guess inspired me to evolve with my blog um, after I found about out about them, but they are, you know, I guess yeah, they are consistently a source of great style. You know, I learn a lot from Simon, um, even though I definitely don't have the income to try all the cool <laughs> shit that he gets to do. I mean, you know, he got to have bespoke Hollywood, uh, Hollywood. Uh, hollywood style trousers what do they call them hollywood waist hollywood, hollywood waist. waist trousers that's what they're called and you know and, and especially uh derek from die workwear i think he's introduced me to yeah not 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 you not collections of values um but you know he's he's i think my window into all like i learned stofa from him you know like or all that all that kind of stuff and they're they're both really great guys who do probably the best jobs of what they what they, what their mission is and i'm and I'm glad that you know we were able to talk about them. And uh, even though it might sound that I don't like Simon, I really, I really respect him, and I think he has. I guess yeah, he does. He has great style. You know, when you when you look at it and you look at his dope overcoats, because that is some seriously dramatic collars. Um, but yeah, I, oh, uh, uh, thank you guys for listening. A few more shout outs. Shout outs to the Drake's crew for always like putting up with me because like <laughs> <laughs> I go in there way more often than I should. And uh, you can yeah you know, actually see the guys over on Ethan's website on that New York style uh, New York style uh, blog post. Yeah, man, Chase, Kevin, Matt, Alex. Hopefully, oh. gonna get some of them on the cast. Yeah, we will. We will. I think we're gonna get Chase on in the future someday. So cool. Uh, yeah, and then we'll be two good. more shout outs go out to the recently deceased, unfortunately Stephen Hawking. Who I actually share a birthday uh, birthday with, so that hit me a little hard. I read uh, Brief History of Time when i was like probably 11 or 12 and that was like a oh, no. really oh, cool God. It, it was it was an illustrated version to be fair mm-hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it was a really cool existed. what a, a genius really, child it was a really really cool You're a real young sheldon into like the uh into astrophysics and like the greater 
outdoors. Well, uh, further than outdoors, I guess. I'm more of an indoor person, but... <laughs> Right. Um, and then I guess a final shout out goes out to the again recently deceased Hubert de Givenchy, um, oh, yeah. the guy behind Givent, uh, Givenchy, and uh, mm-hmm. the, you would probably know him a little more from uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's because he's the guy who designed the uh, the long uh, little black dress that Audrey Hepburn wears in that one. Oh yeah, yeah oh, right. I know. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Derek, for joining us. Yeah. Uh, and thank you guys for, for listening. If you want to leave us a review, that would be really helpful on Apple iTunes podcasts. Um, and you can follow us. Uh, my personal Instagram is at Ethan M. Wong. I'm Spencer DSO. And, and then you can also connect with yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Well, Derek's is collections, collections underscore of values. of values. Yeah. And then also the podcast, uh, the podcast Instagram, which is at style and direction, all spelled out. You guys can message us there and we'll post pictures of all the stuff we talk about. Um, and Derek, would you have a cool sign-off phrase for us uh, that we can uh, go to sleep now? Uh, let's all go to sleep now. <laughs> all right, let's all go to sleep now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye.